Hey everybody, welcome to Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain. Super excited tonight. We're going to be talking about the invisible toxin that most of you don't even consider in terms of trying to restore and rebuild your health. And that invisible toxin is what you breathe on a day in, day out basis. It's the air toxins, right? The toxic air particulate that is all around us, especially those of you living in an industrialized area. You know, if we look at data, uh, 50% of Americans live in areas where the air quality receives failing scores in terms of the quantity of chemical exposures and the pollutants and other types of compounds that can contribute to chronic inflammatory disease. As a matter of fact, if we look at who statistics data, the 4.2 million People, okay, 4.2 million deaths every year as a result of exposure to ambient outdoor pollution. We get 3.8 million people uh, that die every year as a result of household pollution exposure. 91% of the world's population lives in places where air quality exceeds WHO guidelines. And so it's very, very important. Again, we're, it's around us. We can't escape it unless you just go buy a house out somewhere in the country and, or, or move. Um, you're not really going to escape the ambient air pollution and you're not really going to be able to make much of a change other than, you know, becoming politically active and trying to help to, um, hire or, or to vote for people who have a greater degree of concern as it relates to pollution and pollution management and control. Fortunately, at least in the U.S., we do have an EPA that has a lot of very rigid and strict standards, which is good for us, um, unlike other countries like China, which have poorer air quality even than what we do here in our industrialized cities. So all that being said, we've got a major problem outside, but we've also got a major problem inside. Many of you have um, have newer homes, and so in these newer homes, the seals around the windows, the seals around the doors are very, very tight. So a lot of the pollutants that are inside the home are trapped inside the home. Now, depending on what kind of AC unit or AC system you have, some AC units will pull the air from the outside in, and some AC units will just recirculate the air that's in your home. If you have a unit that recirculates the air in your home, and you got brand new carpet, brand new paint, brand new furniture, curtains hanging on the wall, you bring in dry cleaning or dry clean clothes that there's ambient chemicals that are released as a result of that. You're plugging in Glade air fresheners or you're using uh, toxic cocktails of household cleaners. Like all that stays in your home and it outgasses. And it's that outgassing of all those different chemicals that you're just repetitively chronically exposed to. Indoor air, some research shows that indoor air is a hundred times more polluted than outdoor air because it's concentrated, right? It's concentrated in a smaller volume of airspace and it has nowhere to go because the doors and the windows are tightly sealed. Now, if that's your case, if you're, if that's where you're at, what I would recommend is open the windows, let that stuff periodically out gas out. Remember the law of passive diffusion states that a substance will travel from the area of greatest concentration, meaning if the air in your home is a hundred times more polluted than the air outside, you open the windows and all that pollutant that's trapped inside your home will dissipate out into the external outside atmosphere and you're actually going to clean the air in your home by airing it out. So very, very important that you do that periodically, especially as weather permits it. So why is air so important? Aside from the fact that we need oxygen to, to thrive and survive and produce energy, you know, we breathe in massive quantities of air on a daily basis. Air is so critical for supplying that oxygen from the environment that drives the molecular mechanisms behind cellular energy production, which means it helps you heal, it helps you repair, and it helps you maintain your body. If we're kind of comparing air and water, your air quality or your air quantity, okay, you breathe in about 11,000 uh liters of air a day, which is about 70 times the quantity of what will fill a bathtub in terms of water. So air plays a huge role uh, as far as is what's related to what you bring in. Remember that the chemical particulate in the air when you're breathing in 11,000 liters a day uh, is very, very dramatically high. So air feeds every organ in your body. It feeds your brain, it feeds your muscles, it feeds your heart, it feeds your, your um, spleen, your liver, your kidney et cetera, et cetera, on and on and on. Air is important, right? There's a process in the body called oxidative 
phosphorylation. That is the biochemical process of how we use oxygen to basically drive the energetic production. So in order to be able to make energy, we require oxygen. That's why people who are anemic, remember anemia means without oxygen. People who are anemic are tired, have brain fog, have muscle pain, they hurt, they don't have liver function or their liver function is compromised because all those organs require oxygen to properly function. So air, super, super critical. So what are some of the health impacts of air pollution? So there's the obvious, right? We have, you know, one of the obvious ones is, is, is air pollution is going to create things like COPD, right? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma. Um, there are a number of different airway diseases, but, but, you know, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, many people have asthma, many people have, um, kind of an outdoor environmental flares, like they, especially during allergy season, you go out and you're breathing in the dust, the danders, the pollens, the other things, you get airway inflammation. Um, and that airway inflammation or that bronchial inflammation reduces your capacity to drive oxygen into your lungs. And of course, subsequently from your lungs to the rest of your tissue to the rest of your body. So, um, you know, aside from asthma, the air quality impacts you in so many other ways, because if you're breathing in pollutants, if you're breathing in chemicals and these chemicals have oxidizing effects, or if these chemicals interfere with your body's natural process to do what it's supposed to do, then we're going to get diminished effect or diminished physiological effect of our organs and tissues. And one of the prime examples um, is when you breathe in uh, certain chemicals that act as pro-oxidants. Now, if you've heard of the term antioxidants, antioxidants are the compounds that we eat from our food, the phytonutrients, the zinc, the vitamin A, these are all antioxidants. And antioxidants help you deal with pro-oxidants. And so if you're breathing in pollutants, those things, those oxidants can destroy your internal tissues and they can damage your tissues. So the antioxidants are very, very important to kind of offset that. But even more importantly is to have high quality clean air so that you're breathing in less things that create pro-oxidation. But next I want to talk about, so we've got the obvious, right? So air pollution, which can lead to COPD and asthma, trouble breathing, but then we have other diseases that can also be caused by poor air quality. And one of them is heart disease. And a lot of people don't realize this, but remember your heart needs that oxygen. Another is, you know, a lot of people, there are a lot of people that actually die from stroke um, or from a, a, a stroke-based type of problem. So heart disease and stroke are linked to poor air quality. So very, very important that you understand that this is this goes beyond the aspect of your lung. It can contribute to heart disease. It can contribute to stroke. Poor air quality can contribute to accelerated aging. It can contribute to cancers. So a lot can go wrong when the air quality is poor. Just like a, a lot can go wrong, we talk about it oftentimes. We talk about how when your food quality is poor, a lot can go wrong. Well, your air quality is just as important as your food quality. Just like we strive to seek out organic foods, we strive to seek out organic or clean air, right? Air with less chemical contaminants, air with, with less overall problems. Now, if we look at autoimmune disease as a whole, we know it's on the rise. If you've been watching me for any length of time, you know that We've got in the U.S. alone 46 million cases of autoimmune disease, and um, and that's an estimation. So it's really more like uh, like 50 plus million if we really start dialing in some of those numbers. But the general estimation today is about 46 million cases of autoimmune disease just in the U.S. alone. 100 million cases worldwide or more. But it's the number one cause of death in females under the age of 65. And can clean air or can dirty air or polluted air contribute to autoimmunity? Yes, it can. Remember the four triggers. For autoimmune disease, number one is poor air quality, or rather chemical exposures, and chemical exposures can come from poor air quality. Number two is, is food, the wrong food. Number three is nutritional deficit, not getting the right quantity of nutrients in your body to help your body heal and repair. And number four is microbial imbalance. So those four triggers are very, very crucial if you're trying to offset or overcome an autoimmune diagnosis, or if you're trying to avoid or escape the potential for an autoimmune disease. We know that bad air, we know it can affect 
all these different things, but we also know it can contribute to kidney damage. We know it can contribute to an excessive burden on your liver as well. So if we're talking about, you know, just again, the plethora of side effects of poor air quality or of, or of um, bad air, again, you have to understand that your kidney is a filter, your liver is a filter, your skin is a filter, just like your lungs are a filter. So when you're breathing in bad air, your lungs, in a sense, they try to help start filtering that stuff right away. But what they can't filter, if it's overwhelmed, then your kidney, your liver, and your skin have to you know, work very, very hard to filter out the rest. And this can contribute to, again, more types of illness. So when you know we look here, we've got liver damage. We can get kidney issues or kidney function problems as a result. And then we can get skin issues. So skin inflammatory issues are also a potential side effect, again, of poor air quality over time. So many of you, maybe you've already read No Grain, No Pain. Maybe you've already dialed your diet in really tightly, but you're still struggling. This really is, is, is one of the, I call it one of the bastions, the hidden bastions of what people fail to address. It's air quality. You want to definitely make sure you're addressing your air quality. Now I want to fast forward about four or five slides here. If you, if you can do that for me, I want to, there's a picture I want to pop up on Alzheimer's in children. Cause that's one. So this, so what you're looking at here, uh, and you know, from, from the Queen Mary university in London showing that air poor air quality can actually contribute to, uh, early increased risk of Alzheimer's in kids. So bad air quality can lead to uh, a, a dementia or contribute to a dementia, increased risk of developing dementia later on in life. Very important. Now, also in kids, we talked earlier about antioxidant status, and, and I've mentioned cancer here already, but I want to show you a picture of what's called a telomere. Now, telomeres are these little tips that extend off of your DNA. So what you're looking at in the diagram I'm going to put up for you is you're looking at these little yellow areas, those are called telomeres. Think of a telomere a lot like you might think of the little, the little hard cap on your shoestring, right? If that, if that little hard cap around the shoestring is broken or it, or it comes off, then the shoelace itself will unravel. Well, think of that a lot like your DNA. If those telomeres shorten too much and dissipate or dissociate, it can cause your DNA to unravel prematurely. And that, that, that accelerates the aging process. There's some research now showing that the longer your telomeres on your DNA, right, the actual younger you are, biologically speaking, not necessarily in terms of years, how long have you been alive on this planet, but in terms of biochemical aging. Like, uh, if you want to reduce uh, aging in an accelerated fashion, you want to take really great care of your telomeres. Now, poor quality air creates oxidation that damages the telomeres. This has been really well researched and studied. So again, that pollutant, that oxidation effect of bad air quality causes your DNA to unravel over time, increasing and accelerating the way at which you could potentially age. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.